Hey, you done here? Okay, so uh, this is my Dell 1525 laptop. I just installed Fedora 25, 64 bit with uh, disk encryption installed. I've never had tried that before from scratch, like you know, from a new install. I tried some encryption programs in years past, but uh, normally what it does is boot up to a graphic screen and ask you for that key. Or that password. I don't know if maybe you can see it better up here on my big monitor. I've got I'm using the dual monitors here. But that's what that looks like. Uh, I've never seen it before. It's about the third or fourth time I booted it up. Uh, I don't know if it's because of some things I was doing trying to get to, trying to get remote desktop working. Uh, VNC uh, remote desktop apps working to where I could connect to it remotely and I, so I did some installation some setup <coughs> it still wasn't working so I thought well, maybe if I reboot <coughs> I don't know if this is related at all to that but uh, that is what happened so let's see if I can uh, first let's oops yeah it's not going to show up I didn't think it would now if I can uh, what's the okay trying to type on one hand very hard for me one, there's one thing I did learn to do back in junior high and that's type uh, on a typewriter not even <laughs> there wasn't no computer keyboards for us back then on an underwood typewriter I learned how to type uh, with my hands in the right place and I uh, can't hardly do it any other way once in a while, I can even type without looking. Well, actually, I guess I mostly do type without looking, but sometimes if you know, you get you. Sometimes my fingers go astray, or I, I get my fingers on, don't get them on the home keys, and I'm in trouble. Now, it's just sitting there, as you can see, just sitting there doing something. Uh, what I have noticed that I really don't like about it is it seems, I think what's happening uh, when you... Uh, when you type in that key, and then even when it's normal, you know, when you see the little graphic user interface. And I did go off in the other room while it was booting up, so maybe that's what it does when you don't answer it for a while, you know. It goes to that weird looking screen. But uh, it'll get to your, um, actually what it'll do is this. It goes black. It looks a little blue, but that's just the way the camera's seeing the light in the room. But it looks black, see? Well, it looks kind of blue on there, too. I've noticed, uh, I was making videos yesterday, and... I was pointing the camera at the screen and leaving it on a tripod because the only way I could get the video to you know do what I was do get the video to work. I couldn't, I couldn't get remote desktop to work. That's why I got that working. But uh, just go straight to a black screen. But if you click on it, there it is. Well, that's aggravating. Now, if you click in there, oh, it's working. It's make a liar out of me. I guess kind of goes back and forth. Uh, it uh, what it does is not respond and it seems to take like almost a full minute to start responding now this time um, it's ready to go so uh, but it and I thought it was locked up and I was gonna have to you know when it didn't respond like that I thought it was locked up and I was gonna have to reboot but I don't know I just fiddled around a little longer first and then uh, it started working so let's see Even if I had my uh, big, de you know, my desktop machine up and running, it still wouldn't uh, be able to do anything but point at the camera. Actually, this is normally I'll, I've been getting to where I only like to do uh, YouTube live videos because are, then when I'm done, they're uploaded. I don't, I don't have to edit or do anything. I haven't been editing much, many of my videos for quite several years now, so it just takes too much time. But uh, Anyway, uh, but one good thing is when you use, if you don't, if you're not trying to stream to YouTube, the way everything's set up, I won't go into all that again right now, but uh, I can do 1080p, the best that this little phone can do, uh, if I'm recording straight to the phone. So then, I'll, then I have to, if I want to upload it, I have to go and upload it, but that's not, you know, real big deal if you just don't do them all the time. But anyway, there, there it is, booted up. Now, let's see. 
guess while I'm sitting here making a video, let's go ahead and just see if I can connect it. Well, before I try to connect to it, I think I'll turn it around this way, the way I'm looking. Bigger screen anyway. I've got, uh, in order to use my uh, VGA output to my main monitor, the only resolution it's capable of doing uh, is, uh, and it's not that way in the older versions of Fedora, so I don't know, maybe, well, I've done my first run of updates, so. Uh, it could be because this is an older laptop, and I'm, I might be better off with an older version on this laptop or the main or something, I don't know, but the main's kind of actually usually a little less supported of uh, graphics hardware than Fedora. But, uh, uh, and I don't usually, I usually hardly ever anymore install uh, proprietary drivers uh, because uh, they're just a pain to keep up with. And, uh, when when you get your kernel updates, a lot of times it'll break your GUI or it used to. My sorry, my arm's itching and I can't. My arm that's holding the camera is itching like crazy. Okay. Um, so anyway, it's uh, ten, it's set on ten, to get uh, to get mirrored screen. Get, it has that's the highest it can do is ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. So that's why it's, it looks funny. This one's a little out of shape. Because of the way my monitor is set to fill the screen, and then the other one is, uh, you know, square. The laptop it's got the black bars on either side. So um, anyway, let me see what was I going to do. Oh, I want to go to the system monitor app, and I want to see if VNC any VNC apps are running now. Uh, let's put it in alphabetical order so that when I look down there, it'll be. Yeah, they're not running. And I was reading up on it. I've been trying to do it for several days uh, in the Fedora 25. This is Fedora 25, 64-bit. I uh, believe I've already said that. But several days now, I've been trying to get it to work. And uh, I got it up and running. I tried several different ones. This uh, uh, I've been trying. I've actually got on here right now. Vino, type v and Tiger VNC, and uh, another one which I forgot the name of. But and one time during the live, I got it running, but I still couldn't connect to it. And I was reading just now, a while ago, I already rebooted and all that stuff is closed now. But uh, I was on the laptop here and I was doing some searches and I looked up Fedora 25, 64-bit VNC server and I saw that it's a common problem since Fedora 22 and I saw a bunch of people well try this try that and I thought of uh, make sure you have your uh, report open you know your uh, firewall port open which I do I think I'll have to type in my password to get to this yep let's see Okay, let's see. Oh, we went back to public. I thought I was trying to save it to, as works. Usually, I don't forget, remember exactly how you do it. I haven't done it in a while, but uh, normally I, I like to save it as workstation or home or something like that. So I think maybe the settings I did in the firewall didn't keep. Nope, they sure didn't. So... Yeah, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and enable VNC server. Add the ports too, just to be safe. Seems like I've done this before and I didn't manually add the ports and it still didn't work. I don't think you need uh, UDP, but I'm going to do it just to make sure there's not any old, any of the back end stuff for it that I need. I hit permanent, that should do it. I say no. That only did for runtime. Well, let's go back to runtime. As long as it's still there, okay. That's that. That way, I don't. I don't really want to leave it in public profile. I'd rather it be home or workstation or something. I think I did workstation last time, but I'd rather not be public. That way, I can use the public profile when I'm on. Like if I go somewhere with this laptop, um, you know, I'll have a profile that's a little safer for my firewall. So um, let's just leave it like that. And from what I remember, for quite a few years in Fedora, when you change the firewall settings there, happen right when you do it. So, let's see. <coughs> Just 
get my little KVM switch switched over now. I'm gonna see if I can connect to it. Let's see. And I was able to do this really easily in the vein. I tried to vein live the other day. Now this is actually my uh, Fedora 23 system, but I'm I'm connected to a Windows 7 system uh, with uh, Team Viewer remote VNC remote desktop app. And then, and the reason I'm doing that because it's on the same uh, router, app three router. It's on the same router as this laptop. It's easy, just easier way to do that than to go change the router port and ports and all that. So I still have the IP address in there of the laptop. So try it. Yep, same old error. Type in, ti Tiger VNC viewer, no connection. That's the same. Uh, see, the Tiger VNC is available for Windows and Linux. So I'm even using the same app, <coughs> which usually doesn't matter. I do kind of remember a few apps. One or two apps that, you know, like one time, I do it a lot between out in the garage, some computers I have out in the garage and the ones in the house, my desktop in the house. And uh, I'll use those slow old Pentium 3, 350 megahertz, 500 megahertz machines to connect in here. And like if I want to look something up or something, because they can't really surf the internet. They don't have enough power for Java and Flash and HTML5 and all the stuff that's on, you know, on the web now. So, um... Yeah, we're just still hung up with that. <coughs> and I've done the instructions. This is the third time I think I've followed the instructions uh, on how to set up. Uh, I believe it's Tiger VNC. That's the one that Fedora recommends you use. Let's see. If I can get to my... I haven't even set this up right, so I can't, can't see anything. I need my... Let's see. Let me just get to my, I just wanted to get to my uh, bookmarks. What I know to do is just set the darn browser up the way I like it. Forgotten how to do that too because I haven't had to do it in quite a long time. I, I've been running Fedora 23 since it came out so I haven't done any new setups in a while. can't just right click and do it anymore you have to do it in here somewhere let's see I'm trying to make the all the uh, navigation up at the top show up I completely forgot. Oh, here it is. You can do it up there. Okay, it's just me. Alright. Now. That's all I wanted was show all bookmarks. That way I can get two all bookmarks. Okay. And that's my previous. Just search I just did. Okay. Yeah, issue setting up VNC server. I'll go to that one because. Alright, let's try that one first. I don't remember. Oh, that's just the website with the. Yeah, this is the one. He was in Fedora 24. And, uh. He. he like he, like me, you know. Well, I've been using it since, like, Fedora six or seven or something but uh he says uh you know he's been using it since 20 and all on up to 23 but in 24 i see because yeah it works in my fedora 23 i did it the other day what i've got what works really easy is to use uh, you can install vino or just actually fedora 20 already had tiger vnc the light version of it already pre-installed which this one did too but it didn't work, so I went ahead and installed the server and followed the instructions on another page. Didn't help. Uh, but install um, KRFB, which is a KDE management app for the um, for uh, VNC servers. Oh, I got a. Yeah, you got it. But 
what's my keyring password and tell you know you can set your passwords and all that and as soon as I installed that it started working on my, uh, uh, I didn't even have to install anything else it was just worked with the Tiger VNC that was already installed on my Fedora 23 That was my key ring. Okay, so, and if you close it, it's still there. See, it stays running. But that's just really the control application that just makes it, instead of having to do it all in the c command line, it does it for you. But, and it works on the bang uh, live. I did it in there. Works on my Fedora 23, but it's not working in 25. <coughs> and then, uh, anyway, they talk about some of the steps that are on this other site that I followed on the actual Fedora documentation site. Right here. Installing VNC server. And I followed through and uh, I just ran that command just to be quick and simple and and all it did was just add Tiger VNC server. The full server instead of the kind of you know minimal one. Then it just tells you the command to copy this file over and then it tells you how to edit the file to add your username which I did I did notice that there was more than one place to put your username in there and uh, made sure I did that I used co uh, finding co finding replace you know and that's how I found it and then uh, the only other thing well I didn't run these commands to do the password because I'd already done that with the uh, GUI app I could do that but uh, I think it'll just let me ask me, it'll just answer me to do it again. I can't hardly type this right now, so I won't try it right now. But I've done that before already twice, and it didn't help. On a different, two different live versions of uh, Fedora 25. So, and then I went on and on and read through, and then some of them, and I thought of this. They mentioned SE Linux might be causing it, and they and they set uh, Enforce Zero on SE Linux, which makes it more puts it in permissive mode. They said they turned it off, but that's not what it does. It sets it in permissive mode. It's just not as strict that way. I used to always do that on my systems. I actually, I don't think I ever had to do it on my Fedora 23. I really didn't have any trouble with things not running, so, you know, why make it more permissive? But uh, a, a guy, one of the Fedora, uh, the, develop, uh, the, bug re the bug report developers on uh, taught me how to do that years ago. Um, when I had bugs, you know, I was reporting bugs. I used to do that all the time. Anyway, they never did. I never saw that they uh, they really figured it out on this forum post, and that's the Fedora forum, you know, 2016 too. So uh, this is 2017. So you'd think by now, you know, it would have. Of course, just because somebody figured it out, don't mean they went and posted it again, but. It looks to me like it's still not working in Fedora 20, and it worked. Okay, now here's this. Now there's another uh, proprietary uh, VNC app that I use. I started using this just last year. It's Ka Ta uh, Ta uh, Team Viewer, and uh, it will. You can either install it in Windows, Linux, or you can run it in portable mode in Linux. I think you can do it in Windows. No, I don't know if you can do it in Windows or not. But anyway, I've been running it in portable mode in Linux in, in live OSs, and it's great. Just start it up, and it works, you know, and you don't even have to worry. And it'll go through all three of my routers by without any extra configuration. I don't have to do port forwarding or any of that stuff. But it runs perfectly in Fedora 25 32-bit uh, and works. But in 64-bit, well, they don't have a 64-bit version, and I wasn't really paying attention. I kept trying to make it work, and it wouldn't work. Finally, I got to looking at the file I had, and it said, uh, you know, 32-bit, so uh, or X32 or whatever. <coughs> but anyway, what a pain. But this time, I don't know what command. I don't remember from the other day. Actually, I was doing Vino. I remember that. But uh, oh yeah, there's another page. Not I have that saved in my Fedora 23 system. There's another page with some commands. Anyway, I was able to get, I can't get it up, I can't even see the service running. And, uh, well, that's what they were saying, that it, it kept, it wouldn't start for them either, so that's, uh, I guess that's why when I run the command to start it, it doesn't start like it should. So, um, yeah, that must be it.
So if you're having trouble with it, so is a, a lot of other people. And uh, they're given different things that would happen to them, how it would not start like it should. But um, yeah, all I did was just search. Uh, this is how I found those pages. Since I can't, you probably can't read <laughs> the addresses as long. For door 2564-bit VNC server, and that's, you know, how I found those pages. Uh, there's more to, you know, more you could look through, but there may be one of these that'll get you going, uh, you know, if you keep trying. But <coughs> anyway, I don't actually need it. The only reason I wanted it, I mean, you don't, I don't necessarily, I definitely don't want it running all the time on the laptop, especially if I took it somewhere, you know, I wouldn't want a VNC server running on it, but uh, for security reasons, but uh, I just wanted it running so I could make videos, remote desktop videos uh, out on YouTube, uh, instead of holding a phone look, you know, up at it, <coughs> so that's the whole thing I was trying to do, so anyway, still no go on running, uh, any any uh, connecting to any kind of VNC server on Fedora, 2564-bit not for me, and it's for a lot of people it looks like. And here's the yeah I already said that that's the, the instructions that I've followed three times now uh, for how to do it. Um, and uh, oh yeah, there's the password. Uh, what else is down there? Starting it okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I couldn't figure that part out. It, it tells you to replace uh, starter, and it tells you you don't have to put in a port, uh, a, a, a number, a uh, pair higher up. It says you don't. It'll automatically configure the. Uh, where does it say it? Yeah, right there. VNC server utility, which starts. Oh, I think that's the other command I was thinking of. VNC, it runs XVNC with appropriate options and starts window manager on VNC desktop. It allows users to run separate uh, sessions and control machine, which can be accessed by a number of clients from anywhere. Well, that's not the one I was thinking of either. Okay, I think that is the command that would start, should start the server, though. I don't think you have to start it as root. Let's see. Um, there's no need to include display number but then down there it tells you uh, how to after you've done all that and then it tells you this long command to start it up and it tells you you have to put in the display number <laughs> so uh, start or enable the service specify the display number directly in the command line this uh, the file configured works as a template of the, that you've already configured above. You'd have to read all this. I can't. Okay, but so if I try to do this, then uh, I think I may have to put in my root password. Yeah. Oh, it's asking me for a password. Okay. Mm. It's really hard to type it in. Well, there's no point uh, on in trying to do. I mean, nobody can stand and watch this moving around like this. I don't think so. Uh, anyway, I guess I'll fiddle with it some more, and then if I actually get it all figured out, maybe I'll try to make a steady remote desktop video. I can always show it. Well, no, I can't show it on. Won't do any. It's working on Fedora 23, so I could can't do it on there to rep show what's going on on Fedora 25. So okay. Anyway, this done. I just wanted to show some of this stuff. All right, bye.